Dr. Dillon, one thing I know that's underway at NAL is a lot of work with the LISTEN. Can you talk about that? Sure. The LISTEN is the Listening in Spatialized Noise Sentences Test. So this is a test aimed at um, diagnosing one particular type of central auditory processing disorder. We think CAPD is a big umbrella term and there's a whole range of different things underneath it. Um, so the one that we've been focusing on are children with what we term spatial processing disorder. These are children with uh, normal hearing. Well, they may not, but most of them have normal hearing. Uh, and what they haven't developed is the ability to focus on sounds from one direction and suppress sounds from other directions. If you measure them in a speech test where everything is coming from the same place or out of the same pair of headphones, they seem normal. But as soon as you separate the speech from the noise, suddenly they're different from the children around them and that causes them problems in the classroom. So what we've done is we've processed sounds so that they're coming actually out of headphones, but they sound like the target is straight in front. It sounds like there's one distractor over that side and one over that side. Now, if you know a bit about CAPD, you'll immediately think, oh, it's a speech test. How can we diagnose CAPD? What, 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 wouldn't a language problem cause it to look like CAPD? So what we've done is we've got the two conditions, one where everything is straight ahead and the other one where we have the separated noises out to the side. So, yeah, language problems might cause a suppression of the score or someone who's just learning English, for instance, will need a, a better signal-to-noise ratio. But what we're interested in is the difference between the two signal-to-noise ratios. And that way we think language is constant and we can really pick out these children whose only problem is an inability to uh, spatially separate sounds and then attend to the one that they're trying to attend, such as the teacher. So once this has been diagnosed, what can be done for it? Well, that's the good news. Look, this could be the first time that an audiologist has actually been able to, well, I don't use the word lightly, but it looks like cure uh, the problem. So we have a remediation strategy which consists of practice at doing the thing they can't do. They take home some software, we call it Listen and Learn, um, and uh, every day, five days a week, uh, 15 minutes a day, they play computer games where their job is to click on the icons that match the sounds they hear coming from straight ahead and ignore the, what we call them, tricky people talking at them from the sides. And of course, the better they get at it, the harder they, they, um, the signal noise ratio becomes. And what we see is over three months, a very gradual improvement, but adding up to a 10 dB improvement in signal to noise ratio over three months. Um, and the self-report data at the end from the parents, teachers, children, all support the fact that this generalizes to real life. So these children have got a very specific form of a central auditory processing disorder. And by giving them very specific uh, training in that uh, skill they haven't developed, they learn it. We've done a randomised control trial, a small one, but it was very convincing results. Um, all the children thought they were getting an auditory training program, and they were. Um, half of them got to listen and learn, half of them got another well-known training program, but it didn't train spatial skills. And sure enough, the ones with the spatial training got better at spatial things, and the other ones didn't. Now, is this remediation something that could help people with hearing loss as well? Because we know that people with hearing loss often have the same problem. Yeah, people with hearing loss all have this problem. Now, it seems a bit strange. Why would people with hearing loss have a central auditory processing disorder? Well, it may, be, it may just seem like a central auditory processing disorder. We think it's the product of the degraded um, output from the cochlea, which is actually giving them the same symptoms. So they've definitely got the same problem, an inability to focus in one direction and suppress sounds from others but it's not something that's uh, coming from up the top, if you like. It's the, it's the problem with a signal that's coming up from the bottom. We are actually training some people right now. Our strong expectation uh, was that it wouldn't work, but we thought we had to try it. And the first two or three people that have finished, indeed, have got no benefit from the training. So if you've got normal hearing and spatial processing disorder and you're a child, we haven't tried it on adults, um, then we can fix it. If you've got a hearing loss, um, then no, we can't. And really, you're then up to... Um, FMs or directional microphones to physically improve the signal-to-noise ratio instead.